Good morning. Good morning. Check out your bulletin. Check us out on Facebook. Check our website. All the things that are going on at St. John the Apostle are listed there. Uh, we do our best to keep the community building moment short. And it's an example of how vibrant and dynamic this community is that despite our best effort, they still keep getting longer and longer. Um, so check out those bulletin inserts. Very important this Sunday. Ron is looking for some musical uh, instrumentalists for our Christmas Eve service. So if you play something like the harmonica, I don't know, uh, please check in with Ron because he would love to have some instrumentalists join us for Christmas Eve. In advance, or I'm sorry, in observance of Veterans Day, the church office is going to be closed on Friday the 11th. November the 20th, two weeks hence, it's going to be a very uh, busy day here at St. John the Apostle. We have the installation of your senior pastor. We have the congregational meeting, and we have a board meeting. So it's just going to be a chock-full day on November the 20th. Please make sure you join us. If you or someone you know is in need of some assistance relative to Thanksgiving dinner, we have our Thanksgiving in a box. There is a sign-up sheet in the back. This was Dale Weddle's uh, amazing idea. And so we're going to be providing turkeys, vegetables, potatoes, stuffings, everything. The deadline for that is next Sunday the 13th. And you must be present to pick that up on Sunday the 20th. So if you or someone you know is in need of a Thanksgiving in a box, sign up sheet, we are more than happy to be uh, participative with you all in that. Okay, I'm going to ask uh, Dale, our treasurer, to come up, who's going to make a quick uh, and brief potentially brief announcement. <laughs> and then right after that, we're going to have uh, Andrew come up to make another announcement. Dave?
Andrew and Helper. <laughs> So, I came to you two weeks ago, I was a little shorter back then, <laughs> um, to remind you all that we are re-establishing the library, and to that end, <coughs> we are establishing a library fund. Please, please, please give accordingly. We would like to have it wrapped up in time for you to be able to enjoy your summer reading. So, the sooner you give, the sooner we can start building. Please give generously. Thank you so much. Thank you, Andrew, and help me. Uh, today is the first Sunday of the month, so we're going to be receiving a separate second offering for our building fund. And as always, we uh, have our Dean's Pantry. Uh, we have our food pantry every Tuesday where we provide for those who are food insecure in our community. So let's take a brief moment to pray and bless the food that we continue to receive from so many. <laughs> Loving God, we thank you for you continue to provide us. You continue to bless us abundantly. And we live into your gospel message to feed those who are in need. God, bless the food that we continue to receive. And as we hand that out, bless those who receive it. Help them to know of your love for them as we do the work of God in the world. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Let's start worship.
Council find that gathered together and we join with one another as we say our prayers together. That is one of the things that we're known most by here at St. John the Apostle MCC, is that we are a prayer people. Amen? Amen. Amen. There's many ways in which we pray. They will be scrolling on the screen. You can read them. The prayer bears are here. Uh, they're just waiting for you to send them to someone who needs a blessing. Needs to know that there are people praying for them, caring for them, supporting them. And they make a big difference. They send them a little note of encouragement in it. There's many ways we pray. We pray with music. We pray silently. We pray together. And we pray for the support. And this morning there is a special prayer here. We pray for Shelley and Jennifer and Stephen. They need God's healing touch. That family right now is going through some really difficult times. And they need to know that we are lifting them up to the God who heals us. There is a scripture here at the bottom that is very appropriate, I think, for what we're all going through right now. It says, those who live in the shelter of the Most High God will find rest in the shadow so as we do this, I invite you all to, if you have something you want to share with one another right now, to lift your hand and speak their prayer out loud. Okay. Such a prayer of thanks for all the support this church gives to each other. This is a very supportive church. Uh, praise and thanks for God sending me through my last hospital stay. Uh, and praise His name. Praise God with you. We give thanks. Uh, with as much anti Semitism and racism in the news nowadays, I have to paraphrase what sir do you do to you think is the least of your brother and sister that you do unto me? calls us to love one another. Yeah, that's, that's the end of the sentence, period. Yeah. Strengthen my mother-in-law who is still struggling with the loss of her husband. Amen. Give God a comfort. God encourages <coughs> us. You know, all kinds of losses. Every loss. Well, let's join our hearts, our faith, and pray with one Loving God, we thank you that we can come into this house of yours and lift each other up to you. Say, Loving God, may your healing touch be upon us. May your presence be within us. And may your peace surround us. Yes, we need all these things because we do live in the day that is now. The day when there is violence, day where the world seems to be against us, it's just kind of eating us up. A day where it's hard. Hard for me. There are many people right now who are suffering from storms, from the economy, from hatred. And we ask God that you would touch each one. And may you encourage them by your Holy Spirit. May the light of your word guide each and every one of us, each step that we take. We pray for our MCCs around the world and the ministry that you've given to all of us to share. We pray especially for this church home that we have. We give thanks for the building, the grounds, but most of all, your presence among all of us. Each one who comes through this door. We thank you, God, that we can join our hearts and our faith and give you thanks for what you've done and what you're about to do and how you will take each event that we face in life and cause it to bring peace in our lives, to encourage us, and to use us to go out into the world and be there. Each one of us praises together as we say, Amen. 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 Amen.
Um, <laughs> our first scripture reading today is from Ephesians 1, part 11 to 23. In Christ we were also chosen, having been predestined according to the plan of Jesus, who works out everything in conformity with the purpose of God's will, in order that we, who were the first to put our hope in Christ, might be for the praise of God's glory. And you also were included in Christ when you heard the message of truth, the gospel of your salvation. When you believed, you were marked in Christ with a seal, the promised Holy Spirit, who is a deposit guaranteeing our inheritance until the redemption of those who are God's possession, to the praise of God's glory. For this reason, ever since I heard about your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for all of God's people, I have not stopped giving thanks for you, remembering you in my prayers. I keep asking that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation, so that you may know Christ better. I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened, in order that you may know the hope to which God has called you, the riches of Christ's glorious inheritance in God's holy people and the incomparably great power for us who believe. That power is the same as the mighty strength God exerted when Christ was raised from the dead and seated at the right hand in the heavenly realms, far above all rule and authority, power and dominion, and every name that is invoked, not only in the present age, but also in the ones to come. And God placed all things underneath Christ's feet and appointed him to be head over everything for the church, which is his body, the fullness of whom fulfills everything in every way.
Let's pray. Loving God, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be always acceptable in your sight. My strength and my redeemer. Amen. The lectionary for today has lots of stuff. It is chock full of stuff to preach on. Amen? Amen. But today is All Saints Day, so we are going to focus on that. And since the 4th century, Christians have been celebrating All Saints Day. And this central day within the church year, which occurs after All Hallows' Eve, reminds us that we are one part of the woven tapestry that is the Christian faith as the body of Christ. And the lectionary this morning focuses on this core tenet of our faith, this interconnectivity that we have with one another, with those who have gone before us and with those who will go after us. In his letter to the church in Ephesus, Paul highlights this idea of unity, saying, I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened in order that you may know the hope to which God has called you. This hope extends beyond the mere idea of everlasting life in Christ for ourselves. This hope is the connector which binds all of the body of Christ together. The past, the present, and the future. So on this day, we mark painful losses. We revisit grief deeply felt. And we also come together in gratitude and with encouragement, drawing our strength from the memories and the reminders of how God is powerfully present with all of us as the one body of Christ. Let me give you a brief example of this. In 1974, this church, under another name, was founded here in Fort Myers. I don't know any of the saints who founded this church, but I do know this. They were women and men of courage and conviction who were moved by the Holy Spirit to go through the complex and the tough work of opening a church for LGBTQ people. And they did that in a place and at a time when that left them incredibly vulnerable and open to criticism, personal attack, and much more. I call them saints because that word has historically been used to describe a Christian, a Jesus follower consecrated to God through Christ and the gift of the Holy Spirit. In fact, we are all living saints. Amen? Amen. Troy Perry loves to call us saints. We are connected to the saints who have preceded us to that blessed promise of eternal salvation. We are connected, you and I, to those saints who founded this church. And this connection, it transcends time and space. It transcends our mortal understandings. Our connection as saints with one another is found in doing the work of God in the world. And I can imagine this brave group of Christians ready to proclaim God's love for all people, especially the ones that were rejected by other churches. I can imagine them leaning into their faith, facing all the challenges that come with opening and sustaining and growing a church. I can imagine the love that they shared for one another. I can imagine the fierce conversations about what direction to take, what kind of music to have, what should worship look like, what building should we rent, who should be their pastor, how should we do outreach. We are connected to these saints in their everyday struggles of bringing the good news alive to this community. And I can close my eyes and I can imagine that some of them came to worship in bell-bottom pants and paisley shirts. <laughs> or in disco outfits and leisure suits. I imagine that they had concerns in the 1970s about rising gas prices, unrest in the Middle East, and out of control inflation. I imagine them fighting the battles over the biblical text as certain faith groups declared they were simply perverted and not worthy of God's love. 
And I imagine that they were tired and yet resolved because they have a profound and personal relationship with Jesus who tells them that they are beautifully and wonderfully made. Outside of the dress code, not much seems to have changed. I can also imagine these saints at the onset of the HIV AIDS epidemic as being the only ones who were ready to hold their friends who were dying because no one else was willing to even touch them. I can imagine the funerals done at that new MCC church because no other church would hold a funeral for them. And I can imagine the deep grief and the loss that comes when this new community's isolation is further entrenched by a disease that remained a mystery but was labeled a gay plague. I can imagine this new congregation still remaining faithful to the call of the Holy Spirit in growing and pastoring and loving and enriching this community. I can imagine them buying and building for the first time and the sense of accomplishment they must have felt. And I can imagine that as that core group began to transition into God's eternal promise, they must have smiled at the legacy of founding a church that today we call home. Now I imagine these things not because I was there. I imagine them because that's the story of MCC. That's the story of this church. For surely the founders of this church knew the breadth and the depth of the meaning in today's text when Jesus said, Blessed are you when people hate you when they exclude you and insult you and reject your name as evil because of the Son of Humanity, rejoice in that day and leap for joy because great is your reward in heaven. In Luke's Gospel today, Jesus is fulfilling God's compassion for the oppressed. Jesus is turning everything upside down while he is also lifting up the marginalized. Blessed are you who weep now for you will laugh. Indeed, how many times have all of us wept? Have we wept at the exclusion and the isolation and the rejection that we have faced? And not necessarily because of LGBTQ spaces, but simply because for whatever reason, whatever moment, we just didn't fit in. Indeed, throughout Luke's Gospel, we find unity with the communion of saints who founded this church as they too read of Jesus talking to those on the margins, challenging the status quo, and calling into question those who had such certainty about their righteousness. In fact, it should come as no surprise to us that it's Luke's gospel. It's Luke's gospel where it's shepherds, not kings, who first greet the promised Messiah. We are connected in this tapestry of creation to those who have come before us, those whose shoulders we stand on as we prepare a legacy for those who will come after us and call this church home. In fact, ours is a great responsibility as we join in union with those whose work of yesterday allows us to do our work today. And yet our imagination isn't limited to just the saints of MCC. We have a memorial table filled with saints who have touched our personal lives, lifted us up, loved us, inspired us. And while no saint is perfect, we are loved and cherished in the memories that are represented here. If you're comfortable, just for a moment, close your eyes. Take a moment and imagine a saint in your life. Connect with an image of them. What are they wearing? How old are they? What is the expression on their face as you gaze at them? What might they say to you? What might you say to them. 
if you're comfortable, you can open your eyes. Our connection to the communion of saints extends into our imaginations, into our memories. And there we find joy, and we also touch heartbreak. We experience peace. We can remember fondly, but most importantly, we connect profoundly with love. Sometimes I imagine some of the saints in my own life, and I I picture sharing a Eucharistic meal with them, surrounded by so many from the communion of saints and celebrating God's feast. And my own soul is fed, not simply in the meal, but in the experience of unity with the body of Christ. And when I imagine that meal, there are no enemies. No one's there to offend me or persecute me or shame me or ridicule me. I'm only surrounded in the same embrace of love in which I find myself. My friends, this is our inheritance. It is an abiding, steadfast, and unbreakable connection to all of those who have come before and to those who will come after. So I end my sermon today in prayer as we memorialize, lift up, and celebrate the saints that are represented on these tables and the saints that are represented in our hearts. Let's go to God in prayer. Loving God, we thank you. God, we are so grateful for the communion of saints through which we are mysteriously united in Christ with those who have walked before us and with us in faith. You have knitted your chosen people together into one communion as the body of your Son, Jesus. Grant that all who have been or will be nourished at your altar may know that they share that table at your heavenly banquet with those that they love. Bless us in remembering with thanksgiving those who have joined us in loving service to you and all the saints of MCC, preserving the vivid lessons of their deeds of trust, healing, compassion, and love. Let us also remember those who lived by your example but are unnamed in ministry to the homeless, the hungry, the widowed, and the orphan. Give to all who mourn comfort in their grief and assure confidence in your loving care. Give courage and faith to your people who pass through difficult and trying times they remember the saints who have come before them. In joyful expectation of the resurrection, we remember before you, loving God, our departed family and friends who have gone before us in faith, and all those who are in our hearts and our minds this day. Keep us in fellowship with one another and all your saints, and bring us at last to the joy of your heavenly kingdom, through Jesus Christ, your Son who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Our call to offering. We are invited to offer financial resources, time, abilities, and compassion in a tangible expression of our hope for the future of the indoor and outdoor of this community of faith, and for many others near and far away. Be generous, my friend, with your trust in the future. Amen. May the ushers come forward. The congregation is invited to join the choir with the refrain. As I walk through the door, I sense his presence. Is it? 
this meal. Let us join together in just a few moments. Prayer, silent meditation, and our confession. As your sister in Christ, I remind you, we are a loved and forgiven people. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Almighty God, Creator of heaven and earth. Through your covenants with Abraham and Sarah, Miriam and Moses, Ruth and David, Mary and Joseph, apostles, martyrs, our own mothers and fathers, and the children of all generations, we are your people. Today we come before your altar with thanksgiving for those who have come before us in faith and those who will come after us to carry out our faith in you to the coming generations. For your love is everlasting and our faith is steadfast even today as we carry on this ritual you started as you shared a last meal with your disciples so long ago. And so, together with the communion of saints, we praise your name and join in their unending hymn. suffering and death that he took bread. And when he had given thanks, he blessed it and broke it, and gave it to his friends and said, Take and eat this, all of you, for this is my body, which will be raised up for you. Whenever you should do this, remember me. Likewise, when the meal ended, he took the cup, and he gave thanks, and he blessed it. And he said to his disciples, Take and drink. For this is the cup of the new and everlasting covenant poured out for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Loving God of new life through the resurrected Christ, bless, transform, and sanctify through the power of your Holy Spirit these gifts of grape and grain, that they may be for us that holy food and drink of new and unending an life in you. As we share in this meal with you in the communion of saints who have gone before, let the wellspring of our hope always rest in your abiding presence found in bread and wine. All this we ask through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And now with the confidence of the children of God, we are the bold and say.
We have a prayer partner available on this side of the sanctuary if you feel yourself called into a space of additional prayer. For those of you who would like a self-serve option, there is communion elements available under the archway. When everyone is served and seated, we will all consume together. The table is set, and all are welcome. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. We invite you to consume it this time.
of God of love. We give you thanks for this holy mystery that no. you have given yourself to us. Place in our hearts a reminder of the faithful work left to be done. Bless us in honoring the saints among us who toil and strive for peace and love in the world, that we too can seek to live in the abundance of Christ's liberated gospel. As we prepare to leave this place, grant that we may go into the world with gladness and a singleness of heart to proclaim the good news of God to the world. Amen. Amen.
you know, because I drop in.